In this video, we will learn that how we can develop a data-driven WPF application in which we will create a, a service-based database which means that a small database file within our project and we will develop a small crude operation in which we will be adding uh, a doctor into our database we will be loading the doctor from the database and uh, we will also updating the doctor information from uh, that is in stored inside the database and we will update the doctors and uh, we will also remove the doctor from the database and uh, these operations we will perform and we'll see that how we can do this and uh, all these uh, will be done with the help of entity framework 6 and we will be using link query that we have learned in our previous video and uh, we will see that how we can develop a very small database based application in which we will be doing the transaction with the single entity that is a doctor in a hospital management system so let's see that how we can do this in WPF to start working with database based application we need to add a database into our project that would be a local database file so I can go into add and new item so under data I have several options and here you see a service based database so I can rename this database as let's say for example uh, hospital management system or hospital management DB I will add this uh, MDF file MDF stands for Microsoft database file so I will add this so this will add this local database file inside my project so you see that this file has been added over here and I can manage this database inside this Visual Studio environment so along with MDF file we always have uh, LDF file as well for the logs uh, I'm having this option and if you don't have this option to add this uh, service based database so I will ask you to go and uh, create a new project basically I want to open a Visual Studio installer so if I open a Visual Studio installer uh, when we install the desktop uh, tools all the tools available for the desktop development so uh, under that tools we see that we have a uh, Visual Studio Express SQL Express so under this dotnet development tools that you have already installed uh, you see that you have SQL Server Express 2016 local DB so if it's not installed you need to check this and you need to install this and you need to update your uh, Visual Studio environment and uh, these drivers and so on so so to manage this database I can uh, just double click on this database file and uh, on the left side I have a server explorer and you see that inside this ex server explorer I have this database already connected I can remove other database connections so this is the database connection that my Visual Studio environment is uh, managing and creating I can manage this database from this Visual Studio environment which means I don't need to have separate tools to manage this database and you see that basic database management system options are available over here let's say tables and views and stored procedures and so on so we need to work with the tables there is no table inside this I can refresh and see there is no table I can add a new table by right clicking so add a new table you will see a TSQL script also that would be generated from the designer so we have a small designer over here 
and we can uh, create our database or uh, manage our database inside this environment so it's uh, loading the design uh, surface so by default uh, one field has been added which is id and it's a primary key and uh, you see that keys are managed over here we can add some other data let's say for example i'm creating a table for uh, doctors so let's say for example i will say that doctor name so i can have like varchar um, 200 for example and i'm allowing allowing null in this and uh, maybe specialization of the doctor and I can select the type that type and maybe designation or the qualification although we can have se uh, separate database uh, separate table for the qualifications because normally doctors have multiple qualification and I want to see the detail of those qualifications one more thing I want to mention over here that if I right click on this and I can go into the properties of any field uh, one thing I want to make over here is that I want to make this uh, identity colon so when I make it as identity colon it will be increment uh, by one automatically and I don't need to manage this ID and uh, uh, for saving this database I first uh, have to name this table from uh, this script and I can call it let's say for example the, this is the table for doctor and all the doctors would be managed and uh, now I need to update because if I press control s it will uh, ask me to save this uh, SQL script but I need to press this update button and this will update and it will uh, prepare the update script and I will get the log over here if there is an, any error I will receive that error over here and I can fix that error so it's uh, almost done and I can update database and update completed so I can close this window and I can go back to the server explorer and I can refresh and see that this table is over here now I can manage data within Visual Studio I can just right click on it and I can view the data with the, the show, show table data I can uh, also add new table and uh, let's add some data inside this uh, doctor table so you see that ID is uh, null and it's a kind of a gray which means that it's not editable I cannot write I cannot type in because it will be managed through uh, this database so let's say for example I can add a name uh, let's say for example Dr. Ahmad Raza specialization is orthopedic I don't know the spelling is correct or not so mdbs is the qualification and if i press tab a new record has been added over here i can add another doctor doctor name is lucy martin and she is like skin specialist dermatologist other way other uh, and her qualification is MDBS as well so now I'm actually adding this data and I can review and view that data if I refresh or I can show that data again so you see that this data has been displayed over here and that's how we can manage our small database file i can go to the solution explorer and this is our database file this which is actually uh, managed over here we have uh, successfully created and added a database file we can uh, also work with the other database options such as some live server sql server 
uh, on local machine on a live server the thing is that uh, we need to communicate with the database and we need to develop our uh, desktop application so that we can do the transaction in the database we can do the crude operation we can create a new record we can uh, update we can delete and to perform those operations in the dot net uh, most of the time people prefer and it is preferred to use entity framework so for this i need to uh, manage nuget packages for uh, this solution let's say for example manage nuget package for solution i can also choose to have it for uh, the project as well i need to search for the entity framework and entity framework 6 would be used so entity framework 6 i must need to install this entity framework uh, in my project so that I can uh, perform all the operations because Ent Entity Framework provides us ORM and uh, that is uh, object uh, relation ma mapping so uh, we can actually install this uh, relative stable version through NuGet packages so packages third party packages are managed uh, through NuGet now so I accept the license it's installing entity framework 6.4 so now it's being installed and uh, I can go and see the references that the entity framework has been added over here and there are some more changes in uh, app.config so you see entity data model has been added entity framework has been added over here and now I can uh, close this and uh, we can uh, create our first adu.net object so to do this I will add new item and in data I will create a do.net entity data model so I will create or name it as for example hospital management system models so I will add this and now it's asking me or giving me some options that entity framework designer from database Entity framework, designer model, uh, entity empty code first model, code first from database. So in our case, we already have a database, which means that we will uh, create entity designer from database and create a model in entity designer based on existing database. So we already have a database. We are not doing this in code first. We can. Uh, do this that we can create models and then we generate database from those models that is called a code first that we might cover later on but right now we have uh, existing database and we want to create model because entity framework provide as the object relational so that in the database there would be tables but in our c sharp and in our project uh, those tables would be classes would be treated as classes and we will be doing all the transactions to the objects of those classes so if I press next it's asking me to choose and uh, as I explained earlier it's not not necessary that we need to have this local DB this can be any other database which means that I can manage the connection and I can choose that I need to connect with the SQL server and uh, when connecting with the SQL Server database, I can provide the the host name in case of uh, remote server, and I can provide other credentials like username and password and so on. So this is the uh, DB entities that would be saved in the configuration, and this uh, this connection string would be generated automatically. We don't need to write any connection string; it will be managed through the entity framework now I can choose the tables which I want to bring in 
in uh, as a as an as a classes and models so in this case we have only one table so i will bring this table and uh, pluralize means that uh, it will uh, make this as a collection which means that it will make it doctors we will see later on that how uh, it will happen so include foreign key column in the model yes we want that because we might need to see the id and so on so let's i uh, finish this So you, you see that our EDMX component had, has been added over here and if I go and see the solution explorer and uh, inside solution explorer you see that this EDMX which is hospital management system models has been added and you see that this doctor.cs has been added over here and if I open this .cs file you see that the corresponding class has been created which is a doctor class and it has id name specialization and qualification and you see that it did the mapping according to the type that we selected in the database so in the database it was uh, integer it was varchar for the name it was varchar for specialization and qualification as well and it automatically selected the corresponding most relevant field which is in the c sharp which is string and we would be doing all the transactions through this uh, this this model which is uh, doctor class and uh, this is our edmx and uh, we can do our visualizes uh, in this way and uh, we have this our uh, uh, model and we will be doing all the transactions with the help of this uh, model so let's see how we can do this Let's add a WPF uh, window. So I will add new item and in WPF I will create a new window. I will name it as WPF let's say 8 and T framework and hospital management system. So I will just copy this because I need to put this in uh, app.xaml. I will open app.xaml and I will say that I want to run this application now. I will save this. So this is our uh, application and uh, this is our window which is WPF hospital uh, management entity framework and uh, now I need to do the database transactions. So let's first bring the data, data from the database. So this is our database and uh, it, uh, ha it is having uh, four fields and very few records. Uh, two records we have inside this database. And uh, I will just first, what I need to do is that I need, whenever I do the transaction, I need to create the object of this data context class, right? So I will create the object of data context class over here, which is hospital management db entities so let's call it db new entities so i will create the object over here of this uh, db entities and you see that this db dot is having the doctors so that's what it is making it plural over here because the table name is doctor and because it's a collection which means this this would be containing the all the doctors this table would having all the doctors so it automatically uh, make it plural so entity framework did that so it, we don't need to confuse that uh, the table name is doctor and it's doctors over there because it's referring over here with the collection of doctors so it pluralize itself so I can uh, uh, bring the data from uh, this doctors and uh, because it's a collection now because if you see that db dot 
doctors is a collection of db set all right so db set is the collection in which we have uh, the database and all the models or the all the objects would be managed this is our uh, db object and we can manage that in this case we will write a simple link query to retrieve the data so i will write let's for example uh, docs from let's say d in db dot doctors so in this case collection is db dot doctors and i will select d and i will say let's say for, for each the result which is docs and i will just console dot right line which is docs dot sorry item dot which is one doctor item dot id name qualification so let's say name and let's say qualification so i'm bringing two uh, fields only so if i run this application uh, it will uh, after the initializing components of this window it will create the object which means that it will establish the connection with the database and uh, after that it will be curing the database and uh, in this case i am curing the doctor table through the uh, doctor's collection and i am fetching all the records and uh, i am just uh, not putting any way clause we will do that after this and after the result i am just iterating through and putting on the console so let's do this so let's run this so you see here in output window is uh, the name of the doctor and the qualification has been uh, output over here and uh, we have only two doctors in the database or in this table so these doctors are uh, output over here so db or database entity is actually something that is communicating with the database that's a bridge and the middleware that is communicating with the database and doing all the transactions and we are just managing the list over here and we are retrieving data through this list using a link we can further enhance this link and put a where clause let's say for example i want to see that i want to see the doctors having uh, let's say for example name dot starts with uh, doctor a in this case we have uh, only one doctor that is uh, Dr. Ahmed starting with A and we will uh, get the result we should get the result of that doctor only so in uh, actually we have two doctors but we actually filter out the uh, result and we can do this another thing is uh, let's uh, visualize and see the things on the window so I can add a data grid data grid is very popular and used to display the data whenever we retrieve from the database so i will just make it a bigger size so that i can visualize the data in a better way i will name it as uh, let's say uh, grid of doctors and i can assign the data source the item source property to this grid let's say for example uh, this dot uh, grid of doctors so item source in this case is the collection of docs which is the result and i will convert it into the list because docs would be i enumerable i enum enumerable type so docs dot to list would convert it into the list and uh, in this case we can do this just the way that we did in the data binding uh, this is our list and this is our uh, uh, data grid and in this case this is the list of uh, doctor objects so if I run this it should bring all the doctors in the grid data grid along with the headers so you see that uh, 
we have ID we have name and we have specialization qualification of all the doctors and in data grade we have headers nice headers over here and we can do the simple sorting with those headers although this is not sortable uh, we can do the sorting like this uh, normally id is maintained at a database level and i don't i don't want to display that id and this id must not be written from my query i can also do this and limit the query with the help of uh, select new so i will do select new and i will say that i don't want to return all the fields but i want to return such as talk name because name is d dot name which is uh, d is a single object of this uh, doctor and the name is the property and I can use the let's say speciality and I will bring specialization from there and you see now we have an error over here because uh, the collection that would be returned over here in the docs uh, is not the collection of doctors anymore uh, it has some properties which are uh, customized so now you see the doctor name over here and we don't have any qualification but we have speciality over here and similarly when we convert this into a list we will get the similar results so let's run this So now we have a doctor name as a header and we have speciality as a header. One thing that you need to notice that this uh, property name that is uh, customly created over here cannot have a name because that would be treated as a property and would be later accessed through the object name. So because a variable name and class name and the property name cannot have space in them. So that's why we cannot put any space inside this. Um, uh, this property that we create and we decide that we need to return and now you see that the ID is not returned only these two fields are returned so that's how we can query our database and we can uh, return uh, the query we can put some where clause as we did in uh, some other uh, uh, basic links and then we can uh, assign the item source to the result and that's how we can do this so let's insert a new record which means that we want to insert a new doctor in the database and to do this uh, we want to take a user input from uh, the input fields so I need to have label and I need to have a text box to take user input so label would be used to display the the label of the field and text box would be used to input the user uh, data so let's first make it a, a bit of bigger text so that we can uh, easily see that I like Microsoft so I will change the font Microsoft Tile Microsoft Tile so this is something that we want to take a user input which for example this is I can uh, say that this is the name of a doctor and text box name would be txt name and the text property should be empty I will just copy and paste this so that we input the specialization let's say and another field is qualification I can arrange them in a better way but I'm not right now focused on the design part so name specialization and the 
qualification and the txt qualification txt specialization and these these are my input fields and definitely i need to have a button which is save or add so button i will add a button over here with the same font styling so i would rather make it like this so that i can copy the font styles and i can reuse that on the button as well and definitely we need to have a name for this as well and definitely click event handler so now if i go and see the code we have a click event handler that would do the insertion operation and if you remember that this is something that is a middleware that would be talking to our database and we always need this db entity we can also create its object at the at the initialization of this window and then later on we can use this we can create the object later on and uh, <coughs> we can uh, now insert the object so insertion is quite easy in uh, entity framework the thing is that we need to create the object of doctor class and then uh, we just do the insertion so first of all we need to create the object let's say for example let, let's say doctor object new doctor and if you see that if i press control space bar it's giving me all the properties and the fields that are in uh, the table so let's say for example if i create first i will create a hard coded doctor let's say for example hard coded doc and qualification i'm i will not insert the id because it will be managed from uh, the database so qualification is some um, qualifications and <coughs> specialization is some specialization and this is that's how we create the object and db dot doctors collection dot we will uh, we will add this object and it's expecting the entry of the doctor and i will create or insert the object like this inside this so doctor the so collection has now the doctor but it's not uh, in the database it's at the memory level and uh, at the application level right now to do the transaction in the database we can call the save changes method so save changes will uh, uh, update the database and all the changes that is done on the db entities and the db context that would do the changes so we need to add the object in the collection which is at uh, memory level and save changes would do the update because if we don't call save changes it will not do the insertion in the database so let's first try this and see if uh, if it's added or not another thing that i want to do over here is i can add another button let's say for example uh, or i can actually i want this formatting the font and the text so i will reuse this and i will just rename it as btn load doctors and i will rename the i will change the text from and i will create a new event over here and in that event 
I actually want to load the doctors as well so uh, once the doctor has been loaded as well whenever we load the application and I also want to do this when uh, this has been this button has been pressed so another interesting thing that I am going to tell you right now is if I don't want any filtering because we use link for the filtering I can do another thing is that I can directly map with the doctors collection in this case the entire list would be shown in the grid so if I run this so initially this list has been shown so if I press load doctors it will again load the list of doctors and the thing is that what we want to do is if I press add button so in add button it will create the object of dummy data and will add in the connection and the save the data and when I press the load uh, doctors button it will load from the database so if I add it must do the add operation and if I load the doctors it's loading from the database so you see that this doctor has been added a new doctor has been added so if I add and you see that the ID has been managed automatically at the database level if I press add and if I load doctors you see another same object has been added and the new ID has been assigned automatically and similarly we can do this that instead of uh, hard coding we can take user input so txt name dot text similarly txt qualification dot text and similarly txt specialization dot text and now it will work on user input but before going to this I will just tell you an amazing behavior of this application the thing is that all the dummy data has been removed I will explain this later so doctor specialization is cardiologist and uh, he is some FPCF I don't know what kind of specialization is doing this so if I load this this has been added from the list and similarly if I add another doctor and uh, it will be added in the list as well the doctor uh, she is gastrologist I really don't know what kind of gist they are so if I load another doctor has been added and you see that if I close this application and if I run this application the doctors that has been added into the database will be gone so I will explain that why it's happening that the doctors that we added it's not there so doctors that we see over here are the only doctors which we added in the database and these are in the database file So the problem is that if you look at the properties of this file copy to output directly copy always which means that the database file that you see over here the data inside this file is a local copy of this uh, database file which is part of this project so whenever we run this project it goes into the corresponding debug or release folder that are maintained inside this project so if I go or if I let's say for example show the hidden files 
So you see that we have a bin folder which is uh, hidden. It's not shown over here in the solution. So it has a debug and release folder as well. So if I open the debug folder, you see that uh, some DLL files has been added. And you also see that hospital management DB file has been added over here as well. And the executable file actually or the project actually execute from here. So if I go and uh, open file in file explorer. So you see that in debug we have this database file and we also have this project. So if I run this project from here. And if I add new doc. Let's add him. Has been added. Add him has been added so if I close my application and if I launch my application we see these docs these doctors are already there now this time data has not been removed so what happens is that whenever I run this application it will copy this database always into the output directory which means that it will replace the database every time when I run my application from here or debug my application so the thing is that if I if the copy is newer I can choose other of the options so if I choose do not copy it will cause an error for the first time definitely if I say that copy if newer which means that the source database of the original file has been changed and the the destination has the older database it will replace the database file so if I run this one now and if I load doctors these are two doctors so if I add a new doc it's loading adding another it's loading so if I close this and if I run this So you see that doctors we see the consistent doctors that has been added over here because now data base has not been copied but we need to be careful that whenever we change the database uh, it might get errors so we need to update the database in the destination folder as well to view that database that is in output directory it's easy I will just double click on it and you see that another connection has been automatically created in the server explorer and I can view the data in the output directory because this data is in the local file which is part of our project so if I view this data it has only two doctors and if I view the data from this table it has the four doctors now which means that when we deploy our application we deploy the database uh, and also we deploy the application as well the executable file the binary file so that's the problem that normally we get while developing the service based database because it's a file and that file is copied in output directory every time whenever we run the our application so we if we get through such problems we actually fix in this way so let's update a record in the database uh, to do this uh, we are getting the doctors in the grid so we can do one thing is that we can select one doctor from the grid and we can update the record of a doctor let's suppose well, if I select a doctor and uh, I can update like it's editable but uh, it's not necessary that we are getting the view in this way uh, this will not update it will do it over here but it will not update the data in the database so it's not doing in the database it's just in the grid only so if we want to uh, attach this with the fields first we need to understand that how update works in entity framework so uh, i will add an event handler over here 
that is uh, if I double click on this grid so selection change even has been added otherwise you can add it on your own so selection change will actually identify that uh, which object has been selected so I will let you console dot log this dot grid doctors dot selected item so I will put a breakpoint over here so that I see that which doctor has been selected so if I run this so initially if you remember that we are customizing the uh, the query result so that the doctor name and specialty is shown so if I select this doctor and if I mouse over and you see that uh, this object of a doctor has been uh, selected uh, it has no ID and uh, it also does not contain the qualification field and it is a custom uh, doctor field so if I press let's call them left 5 and continue if I load doctors and if I continue this and if I select any doctor over here you see this time we have a complete object of a doctor having the ID and so on so ID is a unique key and based on that we can do the search and perform the update because there is a possibility that that in the system there is a doctor with the same name with the same qualification and these a lot of other similar things so normally we do the update based on the ID but first understand that how this update is going to work so I'm going to add another button over here which is an update button so let's say for example uh, I will change it to make it btn update doctor so update doctor and I will change or remove the event handler and I will create my own event handler over here so uh, to update the doctor uh, it's uh, quite easy using link the thing is that it keeps track of the query and make the changes over there so let's say for example if I copy the existing code so I query the database and I will say that the result is uh, from D in db dot doctors and I will say that where d dot id is equal to 1 and select doctor so I'm going to select a doctor and I can actually show you let's say for example in the message box show dot r dot because R is of type uh, that can be of a list so I will it's better if I do for each for each loop and in this case I have a collection and message box dot show will give me the item dot let's say doctor name so I am filtering the doctor based on this and I will get the result let's say for the name of the doctor having id1 so I will take you the step by step so that you understand that how update works so this is a doctor having id1 so if I load and you see this is the id1 doctor and uh, to, to update that uh, I am having this r which is a result so entity framework perform this which is called a kind of a tracking so it will track the changes in the object so if I say that r dot sorry uh, r item dot name is equal to doctor m as updated so updated is that his name has been updated and if I do db dot save changes like this so I am uh, iterating through and changing the doctor name so on uh, this update doctor button click I am uh, retrieving the doctor having ID 1 and I am changing it to the 
changing it to the Dr. Ahmed updated. So if I update this, so this is the doctor I am going to change and if I load the doctor you see that Dr. Ahmed updated and if I rerun this and uh, if I see that the doctor has been changed over here which means that database has been updated so you see that how update operation works so whatever the query result is I modify or make changes in the result and I just do the database changes and it will update the database based on the change I have performed on this object that is returned from the query similarly to update uh, with the help of uh, user input I will uh, reuse these fields and I will create a copy of these fields and let's bring it over here and I will bring this down so let's for example I want to load this and this is the copy so I will not use this let's rename it from here so txt name let's make it to specialization and qualification and uh, as soon as I select an item from the list I want to populate this field and when I update it should uh, be removed from here and uh, that's how I can work around and see how I can do this through the UI so if I do the selection upon the selection I want to populate those fields so I know that this selected item is uh, the the type of uh, object of uh, class so I can put a check over here that if so so if uh, this dot items so the type of Or get type is equal to type of type of doctor class so if this is a type of doctor class then definitely I'm sure that I can uh, iterate through and retrieve the items from uh, this so I can say that this is the selected item and I can convert this into the uh, class and or I can I, I know that this is this item is of type doctor so let's convert it into the doctor object sorry for the spelling mistake so now I can say that this dot uh, txt name to which is used for the editing I can give it a proper name that's not a good name and uh, the second thing is that this dot uh, specialization to is the dot specialization and we have uh, an error over here because I'm not using dot text I'm just assigning the object to another object. So this dot txt uh, qualification dot text, which is a text input field, and this is the qualification that I'm going to bring in the field. So I want to populate upon the selection. So if I run this. if I select this item you see nothing has been populated because this is not of type doctor because we customize it to doctor name and specialty that is not pure doctor object so if I do this and if I do the selection and uh, upon the selection it should uh, uh, display the type over here but it's not doing this 
so let's figure out that what's happening over here so this is the selected items so that can be a collection itself right so which means that if I need to see that if selection items is greater than or equal to zero then I need to perform this operation dot count and then I need to select the first index so I'm assuming that user is performing the one selection at the same time or at the one time so I can also do it in a better way on the proper way that I need to identify the number of selected items and then you see that uh, how many items has been selected so I need to convert the one object uh, not the multiple objects so if I load we have an error over here index was out of range so I also need to put this selected index <coughs> so selected index uh, must be greater than 0 or equal to 0 I can combine these two if conditions as well so if the selected index is greater than then I need to perform this uh, conversion otherwise if I do the selection outside this uh, grid it also consider it as a selection so if I select this if I select this and uh, again selected items is the error so I don't need to do the selected items I need to do the selected item with the one object only to convert one object only over here so load doctors now the doctor has been loaded over here and you see that these are the doctors and I am showing this result now I need to change this and update doctor should update this record so <coughs> to do this I need to track this uh, because I am having the doctor object over here and uh, I can um, create a kind of a mechanism so that I need to get the ID of the doctor so I can quickly get one thing that I get the ID let's say for example updating doctor ID is uh, initially let's say for example 0 and I can say that I'm updating this doctor so this dot updating doctor ID ID is equal to D dot ID now we have copied this uh, ID that we are editing currently I can now modify this update and based on that ID I can look for the item and I can update that item so this is the ID that I am going to access and filter out the result and uh, in this case I uh, I'm sure that I'm going to get one result because the ID is um, ID is unique so I can uh, use one method that is single or default I can also use over here some people do this dot single or default in this case either I'm going to get that single uh, object which means one object or I am going to get the null <coughs> so single or default method actually returns me doctor object
and I can see that if doctor object is because just to be very safe I can check that if obj is not equal to null which means I am going to get one object and I can change that object based on the data in the text fields so text name to dot text txt specialization and also the qualification and last but not least safe changes safe changes is very important because if i don't do the safe changes it will not do the update it will not update the database and will not make any change in the database so it will be doing changing in the memory level only so let's do this i think everything will work <coughs> so if i select one doctor over here so update the doctor definitely i cannot see the result because i am not updating this grid definitely when i update the doctor i also empty this fields see that doctor has been updated so let's see and stop and see the change has been occurred or not so if i reload so you see that doctor has been updated so let's uh, bring it back to this one update doctor and this has been updated and to remove the doctor from the list we can use the remove method from the collection so let's uh, add a button to remove a uh, doctor from the list so i will move them a bit over here so i'll just copy this button and will reuse with small modifications so btn delete doctor and its own method that will be used for the deletion so to do to delete the doctor uh, definitely we need uh, db context i can also make it global one but uh, let's do that later so we have a uh, doctor's collection and we have a remove method which actually accept the doctor entity which uh, which doctor object do you want to remove from this collection i need to pass this object and uh, when i pass this object i need to save changes and the data will be removed uh, from the list so uh, to do in a simplest way i can have uh, the same thing like this i need to select the single object and i need to remove that so i will just copy this and we'll do slight changes in that i did not copy this so let's control c and control v so let's assume that i am selecting the doctor and based on the selection i want to remove that object and i don't need to do any updation and definitely i want to do the removal only once i have the doctor in the database otherwise i will not do anything any changes and similarly for the db save, save changes i don't need to do this uh, if i am not modifying any object so uh, db dot doctors dot uh, remove uh, in this case i will pass this obj which is a doctor object and i'm checking that if it's not null then definitely i'm going to perform the delete operation otherwise i i don't want to do this so delete is simple just the remove it will do the removal from the collection and then don't forget to do the save changes because save changes will perform 
the change in the database otherwise it will be doing the removal in the local collection if I run this and uh, if I select a uh, doctor and if I say delete definitely it should ask that are you sure you want to delete the doctor but let's remove this let's remove this one the fourth one so I don't know if, uh, if the removal operation has been performed so I need to load the doctors and it has been removed from the list and uh, yes we need to ask user that are you sure you want to do this removal operation or not and I can put a nice message box and uh, in the message box I can ask that uh, delete doctor and the caption is this is the caption and I will use it as a caption the second argument and the first argument would be the message are you sure want to delete and uh, let's see some other arguments and this some other arguments are this message box button is ok and cancel or yes or no and I can say that message box image is uh, a question or a kind of a warning so let's give it a warning because I am deleting data and message box result <coughs> is uh, no so that's how I can create this show and then this show actually returns me a uh, message box result and I can save it message box result because it's an enumerator let's say result msc box result is equal to this message and uh, say that if message box result is equal to message box result dot yes so if user agrees to delete then definitely I need to perform this operation otherwise I don't need to perform any operation and nothing will happen so if I delete it will show a message box so delete doctor are you sure you want to delete the doctor if I say by default it's no if I press enter it will be cancelled see the doctor is same over there are you sure you want to delete the doctor yes and then it's removed that's how we can further put the conditions and do things like this so that's how we can develop a small uh, application with a single entity having a service based database and uh, doing performing a crude operation adding a new record into a database and uh, showing in the grid updating records uh, uh, in the database and uh, we can do this and we can also perform the delete operation and this is something that we can do with a single entity definitely we need to move forward and work on with some complex database and we also need to see that what happens if I want to change or update the database what will happen that what kind of steps I need to perform so that I get the consistency uh, between the objects which are generated through the entity framework and uh, also the database uh, updated database change so let's see how we can do this but this is the main concept of entity framework that how we can perform the uh, database transactions through our WPF application entity framework is not limited to WPF only we can develop any kind of uh, Microsoft provided technology uh, softwares that can be a web a console and any other application that we can think of and we can use entity framework with all of those so this was the basic idea using uh, and taking the help of uh, link and the database entities with the help of entity framework and this is called a database first approach because first we created the database and then we later on 
converted or the migrated the database entities into models.